This entitled customer just demolished his phone and is trying to get a complete refund because it is defective. When the puzzled retail worker tries to understand what happened, they get a response from the entitled guy that completely dumbfounds them. Happy birthday, today's your birthday, on with the revamped show. I work at a big office supply store, usually on the floor doing logistics and stock, but this particular day, two cashiers called in and I was stuck at the front register for the day. This was on a particularly busy day. I had four customers in line and the person who was my backup was busy helping a customer with a printer. I have two customers left in line when the mail guy comes. I'm about to go sign off for a couple packages he leaves, but he stops me and says, These don't need signing, I can tell you're busy, and walks out. A few minutes later, a middle-aged couple walks into the store, looks around at the package left by the mailman, and kicks them. Twice. Oh, hi, can I help you find something? Yes, we want boxes like these, for mailing smaller things. Of course, those are in aisle 15. Oh, you have them for customers just to take? We sell them if that's what you mean. You take them when you pay for them. Oh, well what about your boxes you get things delivered in? Do you not give them to customers when you empty them out? Could you maybe empty these out and we can have these boxes? Or the boxes you get stock delivered in? Sorry, unfortunately it has to be my manager to open the mail. And he's busy right now. And we don't get stock delivered in cardboard boxes. We get them in plastic bins that we send back and reuse. When we do get cardboard boxes, we put them right in the baler, so they don't take up space in our receiving area. That's ridiculous! Can I go back there and take a look at the baler? In case they haven't crushed them today? You want to go in our receiving area? Yes! I want to see if you have boxes back there! I'm sorry sir, I can't let you back there for multiple legal reasons. But as I mentioned, we have boxes that size for about $2 in aisle 15. Okay fine, we'll take a look! They walk away muttering about how little help I am and how it's a frickin' box. Why can't they just give it away? Why do we have to pay for a box? About five minutes later, the husband came back up front on his own. When he thinks I'm not looking, he goes around the register that's furthest from mine and starts looking at a box that we use to hold recyclable ink cartridges. Sir, I cannot have you looking around back here and especially not touching ink cartridges that could explode on you. As I'm saying this, I look to the back of the store and see that the wife is sticking her head through the doors that lead to the receiving area. It's like telling kids not to do something, only to have them go and try to do the exact thing. So at this point I grab my mic and talk loudly into it. Enough for the husband and customers in line to hear it. I have two customers going into employees only areas, after I already asked them not to. One is up front behind the register and another is in the back near receiving. The husband turned bright red and shuffled out from behind the register to collect his wife from the back of the store. They both stormed out of the store, but not before trying to grab boxes that we have at the entrance for customers that come in to recycle old printers and other such things. They gave up when they realized the boxes are glued to each other and walked out of the store like scorned puppies. What's so strange here is there are often lots of businesses that are pretty happy to give away their cardboard boxes. Usually you can just ask and if they're happy with it, you just go to the bin and take some. I don't know why they were so adamant at getting them from this particular store. If the store says no or they have some just for you to buy, either go and buy them or go ask a different business. I work in a store that has a horrible problem for stealing, as it is a thrift store on a rather bad end of town. Anyways, I'm currently taking a course to become a security guard, so being able to stop shoplifting is really fulfilling for me. So of course I see this guy with a huge hood, couldn't even see his face, and a backpack. Usually a backpack in the store is enough to keep an eye out. I'm working fitting rooms and we have a company-wide policy that you need to count the customer's items before they go in. And you can only take six items in. Anyways, this guy tells me he has six. I tell him I need to physically count them. People put shirts inside shirts all the time, so I feel the clothing is important. He is already irritated at this but complies. Joke's on me, he has eight. So that's yet another red flag. A long time passes way too much for six items, and he basically throws about half the items at me and rushes to the register. As I start putting the clothing on the rack, I see a low-end brand item tagged with a high price. A usual sign it has been tag swapped. Happens super often. People putting a $2 tag on something Nike, for example, so they don't have to pay $10. Also, our tags are designed so they can't be ripped off without destroying the tag, so you can tell if it's been swapped pretty easily. Of course, all the items he gave me have ripped up tags that are not the price they should be. I get excited, show my manager, 
and she knows it makes me happy to call people out for this, so she lets me handle it. Poor girl at the register is brand new and has already finished scanning his items, so I ask her to stop for a second and plop the entire pile of clothes he threw at me in front of him. None of these tags are correct, unfortunately, so I'm going to have to re-tag them so they are the correct price. How do you know? I'm actually not supposed to tell you how I can tell, but our company reserves the right to correct tags that are not correct at any time. Well, that's something your company should work on because I didn't do anything with the tags. Oh, should we? Hey, manager, it seems we need to work on tagging items correctly. Either way, I need to retag all of these items. Infuriatingly, we are not allowed to accuse anyone of anything. So I can only retag the items and hopefully he will learn his lesson. Well then, I want these jeans. How much will they be? He is being super rude at this point. I look at all the tags I grabbed off the other clothes he swapped with. Only one says jeans, roughly $16. Seems this was the original tag, so I can see this hoodie shouldn't have a jeans tag. Fine, but just so you know, I'll be calling head office. I proudly display my name tag to him so he can see my name and inform the manager to which he accidentally laughs out loud, as she knows everything is happening. It was an honest accident. Don't hate on my manager. She's awesome. He left with just one item and left me with at least eight items, all with wrong tags, only to anticipate an amazing call with head office about stopping a shoplifter. I know he won't call, but part of me really, really wants him to. I did everything right, didn't accuse him, just reserved my right as an employee and stopped a shoplifter. Try me, buddy. Call me naive, but I've actually never heard of that method before of people doing that. It doesn't surprise me though, especially at something like a thrift store where I imagine that would be a lot easier to do. I've worked for a big chain cell phone store for about seven years now. This one happened a few years ago, but one of the most interesting. In the story is AG, Angry Guy, and me. Early in the day, AG comes in needing a new phone. I give him the tour of all our devices, sell him the phone, and all is well. After the sale, I offer to help him set it up and customer is confident that he could do it by himself. Perfect. My favorite kind of sale. About four hours later, he comes back visibly upset. I tried setting this thing up and it keeps saying wrong password. I want to return it. Sorry you had that problem. Maybe I can figure out what's going on. Can I see the device and maybe I can figure it out? Guy brings bag up on counter and the phone is in a million pieces. What happened here? Did you drop it? Like, really hard? No, it kept saying wrong password and I got ticked and demolished it with a hammer. It was defective anyway and I want my money back. Well, this is obviously not the condition it was in when I sold it to you, so there's no way I can return this. And you still have to pay off the phone if you want something else. I know the owner, and I'll return this phone or there will be heck to pay. This goes back and forth for about 30 minutes, and I'm keeping my cool. Honestly, I'm just trying not to laugh at this dude's face. Then the dude realizes he made an $800 mistake, and that I'm not going to give him his money back. So he starts to get threatening, saying he better not catch me outside of work. That prompts me to start calling the sheriff's office. As soon as someone answers, Guy picks up the demolished phone, throws it at me, and hits me in the chest, and just dips out the door. Cops come and I tell them what happened. We laughed, and I never heard back about if anything happened to him. So I have this story I wanted to share. It's nothing too dramatic or outlandish, but it's those kinds of things that make you cynical about people when you think about the fact that they act like the world revolves around them. So I work at a grocery store that I'm not at liberty to identify. I work in the deli section of the store, which is usually the busiest part. While most of our customers are okay, with some that actually treat us like human beings and not robots, there are some that are less than friendly. I'm sure everyone knows what I'm talking about. It was noon on a Sunday. And of course, that means that everyone and their mother is raiding the deli like flies to a pile of brown bodily waste. Lines as far as the eye can see on the slices, sub shop, and the hot case. Not only that, but we also have a ton of online orders that we need to push out on time. Customers choose the time that they want the order to be ready, but it always has to be 30 minutes in advance of the time it was ordered and printed out on our end. While they are a huge pain sometimes, I like to remind myself that if we didn't have that, they would all be customers added onto the lines, so it'd be completely unmanageable. I was personally completing the sub orders we had at the time, churning them out at a reasonable pace. I wasn't getting too swamped, thankfully. 
I get one order that's due at 2pm, and since I finished all the other orders I had at the time, I get started at around 1.40. Normally I'd get it at around 1.50, but there were two subs I had to complete, and we were already running low on the sub kits they requested. I only had one whole sub kit, so I needed another one. It was the store brand, so normally had them pre-sliced from a special selection in the distribution warehouse. But unfortunately, we were completely out of them, so I had to slice it manually. It's also three different types of meat combined, so it takes even longer than a normal sub kit. It takes me about three minutes to take the meats out, slice them, weigh the kit so that I'm not using too much, and then wrap them all up. Then I get asked to help out a few customers since we're absolutely packed. I could have just said I'm doing an online order, but I figured I have enough time to get the subs done since they were both the same and they weren't too complicated. Plus, I don't like to leave my co-workers in a lurch. I help around three customers for about nine minutes, putting the time to around 1.52. I can still do the subs in eight minutes. Once I finished with the last customer I helped, I went right back to the subs. Once I got the meats and condiments on the bread, I found that I needed eight slices of provolone cheese for the subs. I go over to the sub shop but find that the provolone had slices like 15 minutes back was all gone. Wonderful. I go ahead and take out the provolone from the case again, and I end up waiting 2 minutes before I can even slice enough provolone for me and the sub shop. Since everyone else is using the cheese slices we have, I get a large stack of provolone sliced up, take what I need, drop the rest off at the sub shop, and then go back to making the subs. Little did I know, the customer that ordered the subs showed up around 1.54. She waited there and didn't bother to tell anyone until about 2 minutes before 2pm. When she did, she complained to one of the other associates there at the time that she needed the subs as soon as she got there, but the time on the ticket said 2pm sharp, no later. The associate went ahead and told me that she was complaining about the subs. Now look, if someone shows up early and they're cool about it, I'll work with them and try to get it out as fast as I can. I really don't mind doing that because we're supposed to provide excellent service. She, on the other hand, was raising a stink about how I didn't get it out fast enough. Yet she was the one that was early by six whole minutes. Any other normal person would have simply waited there until we got the subs out on time. But apparently she's so important that we needed to get it out on her own schedule even though she chose the time when she ordered the sub. If she simply just showed up at the time she set, the subs would be ready. So now that she's complaining, I need to hurry and complete the subs at her convenience when we're still packed. Of course, I didn't do this as a favor. I did it because I just want to get her out as fast as I can. I get them done at 1.59 on the dot. The associate that heard the complaint also went ahead and changed the prices on the subs, taking a dollar off for the inconvenience. Which I really didn't like because it just rewards bad behavior, but that's beside the point. I get the subs wrapped up and packaged, and when I go to hand it off to the customer, she's gone like a fart in the wind. I'm left standing there for a minute with two subs in my hand, looking like an idiot while I try and find the customer. Like wow, if you're in such a hurry to get the subs, why the heck would you just leave in order to do something else? Not only that, we're not exactly empty considering everyone wants sliced meat, subs, etc. Everyone else would have understood that we're in the fecal matter. So now I figured she probably went to customer service to complain. So I go ahead and walk over to the little refrigerator we have to place the subs in there until she comes back. Lo and behold, she does. The associate that talked to her lets me know that she did. So I go ahead and hand the subs over to him because I don't even want to look at her face. He gets that I'm pretty annoyed by the customer. So he goes ahead and hands the subs off to her. Of course, she just takes the subs and just walks away. Oddly enough, she didn't exactly look like she was in a rush. We then talked about how that customer was full of it for a minute, and then went back to the grind. What would be the difference between expecting your order six minutes before it's supposed to be due and when you ordered it for, and cutting in line? It's basically the same thing. Like if somebody had ordered their meal to be at the time that she arrived, and yet she expects her subs to be done. It's exactly like she's saying, yeah, I know you made your order for sooner, but yeah, I want mine to be done now, not yours. It's completely inconsiderate. She was apparently in such a big rush and yet has the time to leave the subs, even though now they're ready, just to make a complaint. Well, obviously being in a rush wasn't the main concern, was it? Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.